Hey, everybody. Welcome and hello. Here we are. Roxanne Love is Monday Mission yet again. Uh, I hope you all had a great day off um, if it was your holiday last week and that you had a few minutes um, to take a breath. Thankfully, I did. I was very happy that I did. It was helpful for me and I hope it was helpful for you. But we're back again today with a mixed bag of stuff because I am getting behind. So let me put you back where you can see some stuff. And today we're going to talk about a whole bunch of things going on in terms of my revamp and getting ready for my Material Girl program. So I just wanted to let you all know I've been a little bit sidetracked because, as you know, I also have a consultancy. Pay me all, and what I thought was going to be... Um, I've been working on a product to launch through my consultancy, and I thought that it was not going to launch until the fall, and an opportunity came along that's going to allow me to launch it later today. So, in fact, uh, that ended up taking a little bit of a priority for me because the opportunity was too good to miss. And I just want to say why I wanted to bring this up is because one of the things that I think is so important when you are a solopreneur, no matter what you're doing, is to... Create that network so that you will get those opportunities and also so that you can think about your opportunities and really weigh them and the benefits of them and see which ones are really going to um, be valuable for you. It's hard to say no, and I almost never say no, but you get smarter as you go through your business and through your life. And of course your priorities change, so you decide how much time you wanna spend doing certain things. And so um, it's important though, to make sure that if you get a good opportunity that you don't miss out on it because you are too invested in something else. So let me just say, in my consulting business, I have a fantastic opportunity right now. And in my shoe business, I am facing a fantastic opportunity. The only difference is, that the launch came for me today, which is June 7th, and the launch of my new direction for the shoe business is June 24th. So I have a little more time and leeway for the, um, for the shoe launch and not as much for the consulting launch. Anyway, today what I wanted to talk about is, it's a Monday, I've got a mixed bag of things that I'd like to discuss with you. Um, and I have been, just because I haven't actively or physically been doing things towards the launch for my new Material Girl program, doesn't mean that I haven't been thinking about it. And so that's what's really kind of important. So let me tell you a couple things. So one is, I had shown you some developments on my shoe, my indoor slipper that I had been working on. And we've seen a couple of versions. This is one that I I was working on where we last saw each other. And what I want to show you is what I ended up doing was cutting, slashing the upper. So now I have lots of small pieces of the upper. And I'm going to come real close to you so you can kind of see what is going on. So now what I have is I have a shoe that is, is the largest size that I'm going to make in its base. And what people can do is they can have a pattern so they can cut down the shoe to its appropriate length for them and then they can put their foot in and they can see where the slide part needs to go on their own foot and then very easily with a scissor they can cut down each of the strands that they do not need on both sides for their shoe. So this is a truly, um, probably a, a design that will work for multi sizes. Now, what I don't like about it is, as a design, is that this is made for a men's, to accommodate a men's 11. That's a fairly large size. So for me, say, who is a woman's seven, which is the equivalent of a men's five, this is a lot to cut down. So what I really think I will do with this particular slipper is I will make a small, medium, and large. And that way, each 
individual grouping will only have to accommodate about three different sizes. So that will be helpful because we won't have to be cutting so much off. And it also means that, cause you know, when you cut these off, they're Tyvek, so they also become waste. So if I do it in the groupings of the three sizes, if you have to cut a, cut a couple off, what I'll do is I'll come up with other things you can do with those. Um, I can think of a lot now, uh, but I want you won't have to cut off say five or six on them to make it work for your foot. So this is one um, big idea that I'm taking forward as I make product for um, my Material Girl program. The second thing I also wanted to show you is because I, I have been working every year I run an upcycled um, slipper or sandal option to with a, a colleague at Drexel University. And uh, we just finished our spring round this year. And so I got some really great ideas. And I had been thinking about non-slip bottoms. And what I did find that I have in my home, this is um, leftover from carpet runners. So also possible that these could become and recycled as non-slip bottoms for the sandals. And it could be cut in strips. And then of course I have some larger pieces. I'm experimenting with something else with these two strips, which maybe you'll see next week. Um, if I'm lucky, you'll see next week. It's a, it's a much fancier uh, upcycle project. So that's where I am with that. Now I wanted to also show, share with you my next great idea. And this is again for the Material Girl project. So I had this fantastic idea that what I wanted to do is, you know, I don't get a lot of takeout, but I know a lot of people have. And so during this time, you know, you get the takeout and in it, depending on what kind of takeout you get, you might have some wooden chopsticks and you will definitely have a vessel that is housing your food. And you will definitely have a plastic bag. And very often this is the plastic bag that always makes me laugh because, thank you, have a nice day, please reuse or recycle this bag. Well, we're at a point where we're not really able to recycle these bags, so that's a problem. So how can we recycle this bag and what can we do with it? But furthermore, can we actually recycle these three items? So what my next piece is gonna be about and likely what I'm going to use as my teacher for the debut of my program at the farmer's market is exactly this. So what I'm going to do, this is going to be made into, I'll get you one that's in process because I've been working on it. I'm back to bird feeders. I don't know why, but I think this is a great idea. Um, and bird feeders with suction cups. So this is going to essentially become a bird feeder with suction cups so it can fit to your window. And the final accoutrement will be, the final use for this will be that it will become a small perch inside. So this is in development. I've got the suction cups, you can see. So I am working on this. Now, let me just tell you, we've talked about this before. One of the biggest problems with some of these plastic vessels is some of them are very brittle plastic and some of them are very flexible plastic. And so when you're doing things like punching holes, sometimes the plastic is too brittle, so we get a big crack. And this is not something that I'd wanna have for my final project. Okay, so you see how I'm developing that and how that is coming together. But let me tell you the other thing that I'm going to do because I think you guys might find this fun and fascinating or at least interesting at the very least. I don't know if anybody can think of another use for um, these wooden chopsticks, but um, I washed mine last night. They waited out overnight, you know, so they're now nice and clean. And I don't know if they bring any kind of 
vision to anybody out there, but to me, they look like knitting needles and they're wooden. So this is going to become yarn, which I will knit into pot scrubbies. So our little have a nice day smiley friend will be smiling at me because I am going to recycle this bag. So let me just show you how I do this. The first thing that I do is I just cut the handles. Okay. Now you can do this any way that you want. Usually what I just do is I just take my scissors and I randomly, starting at the bottom, I just cut strips. You don't have to, this doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be nice. It just has to be strips. And you wanna make sure you have the strips because in order to make it yarn, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie them together. And where we tie them is great because it's gonna actually help give us some pieces with the scrubby, okay? So I'm just going to show you a couple things about what I'm doing with it, just so you get an idea. This one is also a very thin bag, so it makes me think that it may have been made from recycled plastic. So again, it doesn't matter whether it's thick or thin. It doesn't matter how it works. It's, there's nothing pretty about this. All you have to do is take two ends and tie a simple knot together, okay? That will extend our yarn. So what I do is I cut down the whole bag, I put it all together, and then I roll it into a ball, and then I start knitting it. You can also do this same project by weaving with it. And when I do that, I use a an upcycled piece of cardboard to make my loom. So these are two ways that I'm going to demonstrate making pot scrubbies. And then there will also be the suction cup bird feeder. So at the end of the day, here's where I'm at. I have a hook because everybody's worried about still getting their takeout. And everybody has these items at home and is looking for something to do with them. So that's really important. So I've got a good hook. I've got a good way to entice people to want to come so I can make essentially sort of a trailer for my um, first visit for promotion. So promotional trailer. I can teach the scrubby in two ways. If you don't know how to knit, you don't know how to knit. But weaving is really, really simple. So that is something that everybody will be able to do. The pot scrubbies are great because they will reuse this plastic and they'll help you scrub your pots without damaging your pots. So there's something easy to do and you use them until you can't use them anymore. And then the bird feeder will be something a little more upmarket, if you will, that will be a little bit more highly designed, but interesting and able to, you know, you need a little investment. You got to get the suction cups. You got to kind of, um, design it, it's a little more craft oriented than the scrubbies. So I think it's gonna be a pretty good promotional uh, package once I get it there. So I'm starting to work on that and that will proceed very, very quickly. The other thing that I am doing is I'm also looking at a variety of ways. As we know, I've been working with these um, the bags, all right, and I don't know, you know, you all know that I'm having a little drama with my dog, and he needs a sling that will go under his back legs to help him a little bit to stabilize him with some handles, so I'm going to work on upcycling parts of these bags into those, and again, they require a little more craft but I can reuse the handles from the bags to make that happen. And that will also, um, I've got some faux fur lining that I will sew in there 
And then one of the other things you may have seen me do is that I take scarves and upcycle them into kimonos, which make great beach cover-ups. So I've done an inventory of the ones that I have, and I've purchased some new scarves in order to get this going. So as you can see, this is a very typical day in the life of a solopreneur because what I'm having to do is multitask my way through everything. So while I'm telling you, I haven't spent an inordinate amount of physical time making things or doing things, I have spent a lot of time thinking about what I want to do. So what I will tell you also is that the thinking part is as important as the physical part, because for me, what I find is when I start to think about it and I allow myself, allow it to mull in my head for several weeks, I often find a more efficient or streamlined way to do what it was that I wanted to do. So let me also talk to you about one other item that I'm working on here. We've talked about packaging before, and I've talked to you about my petty pack. Well, I would like to sell my petty pack at the flea market because I think this could be something that people would also like. And two types of, um, all right, it's really a ver two versions of one type of product of plastic is problematic, and that is the clamshell. Now, we've talked about trying to make these into bags, and I think it could possibly work, right? There are other, perhaps, things that we could reuse these for, but it's important that we think about really and truly, you know, is there another way for these to have another life? Now, what I don't like about this idea is that I'm repurposing packaging that is not recyclable. So if I go down this path, it means that I'm passing on my recycling problem to somebody else. And I don't really like that idea, but you gotta start somewhere. So, so the plan is to see if I can package my petty kit into one or the other of these, and then to figure out how I can repurpose whichever one works for the person who purchases it. So, you know, when you do a petty, one of the things you do is soak your feet. Well, neither one of these is big enough to soak your feet in. If we were doing manis, you could probably soak your fingers in one of these. So that, you know, starts to utilize it in a, yet another way. Not sure what we're gonna do about the petties, but let's just take a look and talk about the petties. So I have a feeling that probably this size is gonna be the right one. And the reason that I say that is because I haven't tried this, but I'm usually pretty good with spatial stuff. So see the smallest thing that I have to put my petty in is this, and it doesn't fit into the berry pack but it will fit nicely into this particular pack, which I don't even remember what came into it. The other element that I sometimes use and probably would use for the farmer's market is my glass bottles. And so they will fit in here. So that's a great thing. Now, this particular one has a little schmutz in it, so I'm just gonna cover the little schmutz and sticky with my brown paper. But one of the things that I do get a lot in packaging also is brown paper. You might get something like peanuts. You might get some cardboard pieces. So those are also things that we could put in here. But this certainly would be good use in my pack. The other thing that I do is I don't want people necessarily to have to put their scrubs and things down their sink because a lot of people don't like to do that. So I use, I, I always give them a few coffee filters. So it's also possible 
that I could do something. Like this. So my petty pack has two different items that I put in it. So let's just imagine that we start by looking at it this way. I have a foot scrub and I have a foot soak, right? So now all of a sudden I've got it packaged here. That's not all you get though. You also get one of these four step buffers for your um, nails. And what's really cool about this is these are polish and shine sticks. They work really well. So you start with number one and what you do is that that um, file, step it files, okay? You go to number two and that's where you remove your ridges. You go to number three and you buff and then you go to step four and you polish and shine. And so it looks like this, this is step one. So you start by filing your nails and you actually go over the whole top of it. Then you go to step two and you remove all the ridges. You go to step three and you start buffing. And then you go to step four and you polish and your nails will look beautiful without having to put any uh, nail polish on them. They'll just look gorgeous. And that is one of the things that's really important to me because um, we want to make sure that like a lot of people don't like nail polish and nail polishes that are sustainable nail polishes are hard to find and extremely expensive and they actually frankly don't stay on your nails very long. So we now have our kit here. So I can probably put that in the middle. So now I'm starting to build my packaging here. And then the other thing that I have is these are toe separators. And the reason that they look like this is because you might remember that my theme is show us your shoes, which is Atlantic City, show us your shoes, Miss America parade. So now all of a sudden, look at how my package is coming out. And the other thing that you would get in here, so there are a number of other things that would be in this box. There are, um, there is a cocktail that I'm gonna give you that will be handwritten by me. So that's another peek of card that's in there. But the other real big thing that's in here is some saltwater taffy. So I can put, this is why it looks like this. So I can put a piece of saltwater taffy on either side as well. And now I'm starting to get something that is an attractive package. Starts to look like, oh, okay, here we go. I've got these two shot bottles, aren't they beautiful? Handmade scrubs, blah, 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 blah. And I have this whole petty pack. And this could be something that I would give or gift to somebody. So that to me is um, starting to work out and I'm excited about it. Now, as I said, I have to figure out what am I gonna do with this box? so that it does not become somebody else's problem to recycle. Because you see, using the glass is great because they can be recycled. Even if I wanted to go with my packs, these guys can also go vertically into this box so they can go side by side. And that means that these can also be part of this. These are easy to recycle. The other thing I can do with these is I can sell the pack or I could sell the scrub and the um, soak separately and just belly band it. And maybe that's something that I would do with a piece of tie back like this. So these are all ways that we can approach it. And what I really liked sharing with you all today about this is, is that you can think about, it doesn't have to be that your product is necessarily something that is upcycled. But you can start to think about how you could upcycle materials in your packaging or in your presentation. These are all areas where each of us as makers can start to think about how we do come down to zero waste um, and how we do think about putting sustainability as part of our brand and part of our brand image. Those are important things, I think, for us everywhere going forward because 
as we move forward, customers are, those. that's important to customers. So it needs to be important to us as we design and work on what we are working on. So those are some of the things where I am at with what I'm doing right now. And um, my next steps today, as you will know, is that this is the beginning of the month. So I'm working on my new newsletter. Here's some good things for my new newsletter. For the bridal part of my business, because we are all getting near normal, I have, or I shouldn't say normal, but we're returning to pre-pandemic restrictions. Many of the weddings that have been planned are gonna go ahead. So that's great news for them. So I have a little piece that I can talk about there and maybe talk a little bit about what you might like to have. I've made a lot of headway on this. And I've also, because look at what you can do here, guys. We can also create a folded shoe. So now I can also kind of think about, oh, if this is gonna be folded, can it go into something that becomes a package? Like for example, it's too big to go in this one, but what can it go into? Can I make a Tyvek pouch? I'm going to start to put together, because I showed you the kimonos, we're going to start to put together some beach packs. And I think what you might remember is, is that I was building this big Tyvek piece here. This could be actually a tablecloth, but once it gets bigger, it could also be a beach blanket. Again, Tyvek. And I'm using um, duct tape, which is waterproof. So this means you can just hose this down. You do not need to do anything else with it. I'm also going to work on how this can fold together so it becomes the carrier for all your stuff at the beach. So won't that be kind of cool? And then think about this. When we go to the beach or we go to a picnic, we also have food involved. So that may be a way, there may be a way to design or redesign items like this in such a way that they become picnic packs that you can reuse. Like one of the things that I can think of just now off the bat is what if I could put an ice pack in the bottom here? Can I make a series of like sort of bento boxes out of these? Can I put these in a larger box as smaller pieces where the cooling can come in? These are all ways to start to think about what it is um, that we can do with what we are given. And these are ways to help other people think about it. So again, as a small business owner, let's make sure that we are thinking about how we use and reuse what we have and how we can effectively and efficiently reuse and perhaps send on to people. If we're gonna give them this, then let's show them how to reuse that as well. All of these things can build your relationship with your brand. And the last thing that I wanted to talk with you about today is that I have to now also do, I need to get a banner. So I need to get a banner printed. So the first thing that this means is, is that I've got to create the banner. And the second thing it means is that I've got to uh, determine what company I want to use to print the banner. Now, um, I've been thinking about it, but the other thing that I'm also thinking about is, you may remember my big shoe wreath. Um, so I might use a wreath. And um, I have a few options there, but I really do need a banner for my space at the um, farmer's market, which is gonna be a big one, right? It's gonna have a 10, so it's gonna be a big 10 by 10. And I'm gonna want the banner to be something that people can see. I don't want it on my table. I'm gonna to wanna to hang it from my tent at the top so people can see it. So I need to think about what's gonna be eye-catching, how am I going to do that, and where and what will make the most sense, and also be relatively um, cost-effective for me. And so that is, that is my next step, and building as you watched me build the business, now what you're gonna do is have to think about how I build the projects each week, 
how I build my display area. And again, these are things that we'll be covering. I'll show you as we go through the next few weeks um, up to my opening day. So I think we have three more sessions so you can see how I progress because after my launch of my other product today, I will seriously need to get back to this. So I'm going to cut it short today because it's been a busy day, but I wanted to put something together for all of you. And again, I just want to recap sort of the things that I've told you. First one is to make sure that you are working your network for opportunities. The second thing is to consider those opportunities and to think about um, what needs to be prioritized. And if an opportunity is too good to miss, then you want to jump on it, even if that means something else has to move down to number two on your priority list. The third thing that's really important is to remember, just because you're not physically doing it doesn't mean you're not mentally thinking about it. As you can see, I have multiple items in process in my head that need to be tested and refined. That's a good place to be because the testing and the refining will take some time. But the harder part is having the idea. And a lot of times, as I've said, if you have that idea and you don't act on it physically immediately, your brain will solve a lot of the problems of that initial idea for you. And sometimes, if you're very lucky, it will do it in the back of your mind instead of in the front of your mind. And all of a sudden, you'll say, oh, I could do it that way. So that is um, another way to think about how you are building and physically making things. This also, I just as an aside, happens to me all the time in shoe designs. As I have the first impulse to design something, the initial way that I would approach it is often not the way that I end up finally approaching it. Because when I let it sit for a while, even without trying it, I might be doing something else. And that just jogs my memory to say, oh, right, it would be better to do it this way. Then, of course, you get into the prototyping, and the prototyping also helps you understand. But, like, remember, I wanted to build a disposable house slipper that was, well, it's not really disposable. I wanted to upcycle a house slipper into something that, you know, could be resized down in a real easy way. Okay. So, you know, I ended up prototyping it this way. And really what I found was that to try and cover all sizes at once is probably not the right way to go because it ends up for the smaller sizes with too wide a shoe. And so it's going to slip off the foot. But if I whittle this down to three different sizes, then it reduces the waste on all of it and makes it something that will work better for the end user and therefore something less likely to be discarded quickly. Okay, so that's a real interesting thing. And then also thinking about the fact that this is super lightweight. And if I can package it into something like this with a nice little zipper bag around it, maybe a um, bag that the closure is in fact um, Velcro. This is really something that if you just need an extra pair of shoes sometimes in your bag because it's going to be wet or raining or something may happen, this is something you can really just keep very quickly in any bag that you use for commuting or traveling. And it will do in a pinch. And a lot of times it will do in a pinch is an important thing. I'd also say, remember, like many times when you're traveling, you may be, um, you know, using a shower that you would prefer to have shoes on with. If you're going to a swimming pool, same kind of thing. So these are going to be waterproof. They're going to last. They're going to, you know, act just like your other flip flops that you buy that are rubber. That is just increasing product in the world as opposed to reducing product in the world. So those are all a number of things to think about in terms of that. 
And then the last thing that I was saying is thinking about how to build your packaging, no matter what you're packaging. So again, finding components that make sense and that work within your brand and make sense within the product design. And then if you are giving something to your client that they're gonna need to recycle, perhaps consider how you could recycle this or they could upcycle this and include directions for that here. Very, very thoughtful. Okay, and then I think the last thing that I've shown you is that if you just take a little time, you can start to envision and think about how each item, each component of what you're doing with your customer reaches out to them and think about how you can build your product assortment so that you can create a bundle. So i.e., I'm making a beach blanket. I have some beach slippers perhaps because you don't want to mess your other ones up. I upcycle scarves into kimonos that can be beach cover-ups. I also make slippers and sandals out of leather at a much higher price point that you could wear with that kimono as well. And that kimono could go to the movies with you. Okay. And the nicer shoes. So again, remember this is an entry point for me and my shoe business to reach audiences who will have my clientele in them from a different perspective and lens than competing with other fashion brands. And that's my goal and that's the way that I'm going. So again, in order for me to get there, I have to walk the talk, not just talk the talk, I have to walk the walk. And I have to consider each one of these touch points that I have with my potential customers so that I can build authenticity with them and so that they can see that oh she's spending time to do something with Tyvek because she's worried about sustainability and she's trying to make it something that people would like to wear and you know remember this one this is kind of a nice looking shoe not gonna lie that's very similar to what most people would wear so you know they're going to start to see that in what I make by making that higher crafted upcycled product. And they're also going to see that I'm authentic because they will note the thoughtfulness that I have in how I'm approaching sustainability within my own brand. And that will give them confidence in me and my message. And that hopefully will help build a relationship where some of them will become my higher end customers. So that's where we're going. That's how it goes. And again, the last thing I'll say is, let's remember, you're a solopreneur. Every day, you're gonna wear more than one hat. So as I said, today I'm wearing a couple. So I'm talking to you, and in two hours, I'm gonna go launch a new product at a, at a conference. So here we are. And that's the magic of technology. And I hope that this has helped you a little bit today. And I look forward to seeing you next week. And I hope you have a lovely week and enjoy it. And we'll see how far I get on this next phase of this project next week. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks, Neil.